Peyton from Respect My Region here, and today I'm going to be interviewing one of LA's top upcoming artists, True Car. If you're interested in hearing about some of his most recent collaborations, what life was like growing up, and some of his upcoming projects, stay tuned. Okay, so you've been blowing up lately, man. You've been up to a lot. You've been dropping new shit left and right. You just released a new music video. You got the uh, What I See video. Yeah, dude, you've been busy for sure. How have you been propelling forward during the coronavirus pandemic? Uh, really, like, you know, a lot of studios is closed down right now, but we got a personal studio on the side, so I really just go in there and get my work in away from everything that's going on right now, stay secluded and stuff like that. And I, that's all I really can say right now. I'll just be like, it's either work or in the house or with the kids. People be with the kids and, and just to be about your work at this moment. So you would say COVID hasn't caused any obstacles for you? Actually, for some people, see, look, the coronavirus can either affect you or it can either have a good effect, uh, a good purpose. Like as in, you feel me? Sometimes you need to sit down and let people be able to gather their thoughts and see you so they can be able to, you feel me? Now everybody being able to pay attention. Like everybody that was really on their phone, they double on their phone now. So for some artists, they could take advantage of that by beating up the media and stuff like that. That's what we doing with my team. Shout out to 100 EMT and uh, E1 Music. Right on, dude. I mean, that's a really positive outlook. Um, so you've been featuring some pretty exciting artists on your track, such as Bankroll Freddy, Blueface, and G Perico. How did these collaborations come to be? Uh, shout out to my uh, my management, Way. He had linked up with the QC um, label, and we had talked to Bankroll, and Bankroll was liking the track he got on that. And then uh, he a good dude, too. Shout out to Bankroll for doing that. We went out there and shot the video in Atlanta. Well, G Perico, I met him in the liquor store in Watts. And then after that, you feel me, I went to the studio and made some, and then it was like his type of vibe. I, I kind of heard that from my ear. So I sent it to him, he sent it back with some, and then we just rocked out. And then we just recently shot that video and then we got it out. And then with the blue face one, that was on the outside. Shout out to blue face as well. Um, that song was going up at the moment. Well, it's still going up right now too. And uh, bro was just, I guess he was playing it a lot. That's what I was hearing from like the people that was around him and stuff. And then he just hit me up, took it in his own hands and just hit me up. And then after that, went to the studio with him, met Wack, you see me? Everything ended up good. And then we just took off from there. I got signed to 100 ENT, E1. Then now we just working. Right on, dude. That's sick. Really a good reason that I met Blueface on everything, you see me? Because that got me to where I'm, what I'm on right now. Yeah, right on, and congratulations on getting signed to 100 DMT. So, um, I've heard you discuss in your past interviews that freestyling is the staple of your songwriting process. So, can you tell us about what goes into the creation of a song for you? Well, I gotta feel the beat for sure. Gotta have some type of bass in it, feeling in it, be able to talk my stuff. Like, yeah. And to know that I really like the beat, it's going to be like, if I hear the beat, it's instantly in like 10 seconds. It might be even five seconds. And I just start mumbling and some stuff. You know, I'm feeling the vibe. I go replace it with words. As long as I got a rhythm on there, I might even come in. You feel me? How I freeze I might punch in and say the right thing and be like, ooh, I'm about to go put that on there. And now I'm about to go start and lay the rest after that. But really, it'd be like whatever I go through that day or even previous situation, I just go up in there and talk about that stuff. So it really be like easy, like talk about what you just did, all right, cool. And then put it into a way to where other people can mess with it or be able to be like, dang, I feel like this is my song. And that's what I'm doing right now, giving the people the vibe to where they feel the music. Um, And as a songwriter myself, I can honestly say that that method of making songs is extremely challenging. I couldn't improvise a song right off the bat. Um, How long did it take for you to develop that skill? I was writing at first, but it was like, I couldn't really grip to it because it was like, I was at home doing, and then when I go to the stool, 
it ain't sounding the same. Like I wasn't feeling like that or something like that. So I ended up going to going in the booth one day, and then I just go, um, got in there and just started doing it. And I instantly was like, man, this it sound better when I just do it right off the bat. But I've been doing that for like probably like since the beginning too, so for like five years then. And uh, when did you first begin rapping? Matter of fact, I'm going to say seven years I've been doing this because I started rapping in 2013 into 2020 right now. We're going into 2021. So I really started doing that like seven years ago. I'm going to say six and a half, though, because, you know, I prepared myself for those stages. How? What inspired you to grind at rapping at such a young age? Because you were still pretty young when you started. I was at a show with one of my boys I went to high school with, and then it was paid dues, yeah. And then um, what happened? We was in a crowd. It was like a mosh pit right there, right next to me. I'm from Watts. We don't do that. You feel me? We not used to that. You feel me? It's going on and stuff. We get out of it and everything. Ain't nobody touching or nothing like that. But I tell the homie after we leave, like, hey, I enjoy myself. But next time I go to an event like this, bro, I got to be on stage. Well, I don't know. I don't know about the crowd situation. That's out. So I was like, what can I do? I'm like, I'm about to make music. Oh, I really didn't even, it didn't even go like that. I was still thinking like, what can I do? The next day I had a family event. Everybody was like playing around rapping. I ended up getting into that and whatever I said, it sounded cool or it just sounded cool for the moment. And then my people was telling me that. So the next day after that, I went to school and met somebody that had a, a, a little studio at his house. I went to his house and recorded and then brought it to school. Everybody was messing with that. I just kept going, did the talent show. I won the talent show. And then after that, and after a while, like two years after that, my daughter had passed away. I was already rapping. So I was like, man, since my daughter passed away, that's what I got to still be doing. You feel me? Since she passed away, like that got to be my motivation. I can't just give up. So I started going harder. And when I started going harder, that's when the recognition came. Like people start recognizing. That's incredibly rough and my heart truly goes out to you i'm sure it would mean a lot to her that you're using this tragic experience as motivation to keep doing better and oh my gosh she's absolutely absolutely beautiful and to bounce off of that i would love to hear a little bit more about your life can you tell us about your background and what life was like for you growing up man i ain't gonna lie like it's everybody. I know everybody that live with somebody like our whole family, like my mom and my pops, probably and my uh my brothers and sisters and stuff like that. We didn't live with a whole nother family, we went to house to house to house and stuff like that. We didn't have our own too, but you know, it comes to a point where everybody had a bad times and it was a certain it was a cool amount of times that we had though. But we still like I ain't gonna say we still trying to figure it out because we gotta figure it out. But it's like we ain't settling for where we at right now. We still doing that. Like we working to get where we going. But it was a lot of violence just because the area I grew up in, uh, I was, I was into to the sports. I was playing sports. I just ended up getting to the streets where when I really started getting like right deep into the streets, like in like ninth grade, eighth grade, eighth grade, ninth grade to where it took me to the point where it was like, I don't want to do sports no more. Cause it was like, I guess it wasn't cool to everybody at that age. And then I just stopped doing it. I don't know why that was some dumb stuff. And then like, when I got older, it just, I started like thinking different. Like 12th grade, I had moved away from everybody I used to go to school with. So, you know, I wasn't acting the same, like how I was acting. I was like the outsider at the next school. So it went over, when I went over there, it changed my whole mindset. And I was in 12th grade. So I was already like on some other stuff when I was in 12th grade. But growing up, it was like, you feel me? Yeah, it was a struggle, I ain't gonna lie. So circling back to your hometown, Watts, you mentioned that you want to bring attention to your hometown. Um, why is this such an important mission, um, it, it's such an important mission for you personally? I ain't gonna say just because the Compton got the name, but yeah, I do want to do it because Compton got the uh, the name like how it's standing. and we right next door and people don't even really know that part. Like we right next door, people know so much about Compton. You'll see people when uh, I was just on the airplane, I just seen somebody with a Compton hat. I'm like, man, you ever been there, bro? So he's like, nah, I just got the hat. And I used to be like, dang, you feel me? You ever heard of Watts? Like, nah, what's that? I'm like, dang, that's right there. 
feel me? So it'd be like certain situations like that. I just want to put the city on so people know about it. And then I want to bring like more positivity to the city to where it's like more people can gather up and do things in the city so we can have more stuff going on, events and stuff like that, even charities, uh, shows and stuff like that. Yeah, I get it for sure. I totally get wanting to bring more positivity to the place that you grew up in and were raised in. Would you say that Watts and Compton are very similar? Yeah, it's for sure, just like Compton. For me, I mean, they got a little tiny differences, but Watson, Watson Compton like the same thing. It's like a little free, it's a freeway right there, the 105. All right, so to switch uh, topics a little bit, um, you have an up, an exciting upcoming album coming out. Um, would you mind telling us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's the, um, based on the true story. Shout out to Honey MT, shout out to, uh, E1 music. That album right there, or that uh tape right there, I really just switched up the music so I can to where I can go other different states so I can be able to reach different crowds and be able to um you know, cause it's not if I was to just put one style on that tape, it would have just been for one crowd. So that means like only one city would have accepted that type of stuff. I wanna be able to go to every city so I'm I really threw up in there like that type of flavor, I got that type of flavor, I got that type of flavor and that type of flavor. So it can be able to touch down in different cities and I'll be able to work with different artists and stuff like that. So the situation can get bigger than what it is. And what artists are going to be featured on your next album? On this one, I got a lot of artists from the Honey DNT label. Shout out to uh, the Coyotes. Shout out to Blueface. Shout out to Mikey. Who else in there? Shout out to D Puerto Rico. Shout out to Bankroll Freddy. Shout out to Rich the Kid. And that's it for right now. But I, I do got some more features besides that. But that's for the based on the true story for sure. All right. I'll be keeping my eye out for that in February. And before I go, is there anything else that we should be keeping our eye out for? Uh, True Car featuring Sada Baby. True Car featuring Draco. True Car featuring Mozzie. Be sure to check out True Car's latest release, She Got That, featuring Hardini, and keep your eyes peeled for Based on a True Story coming out in February.